Uh, uh, I'm John. Uh, I'm a software engineer on our security infrastructure team in London. Um, that's my PGP key, in case any of you care. Um, and yeah, Pat Pair asked me to come here and just talk a bit about what we did, uh, why we did it, and then some technical details on how, in case anyone else wants to do it. Um, so, without further ado, what did we actually do? Um, well, we added this profile field, the PGP key, allowing you to enter in, a, uh, enter in your key, ask Yama, as you'd expect, display your fingerprint, put it up for download by anyone, and then ask us to encrypt emails that we send to you with them, so that emails from Facebook will henceforth look something like this. Or at least, uh, we will, once you've clicked on the link in one of these emails, which just checks that you actually can, so we don't like, lock you out of your account because all your password reset emails are now encrypted to some key that you don't know how to use. Um, so why did we actually do this? Does it do anything good for us or for anyone? Well, this basically splits, splits up into two questions. Why would you want to use it? So sharing a key on your own profile, what benefits does this bring you over, say, the key servers or anything else? Well, for starters, the key servers can be pretty ambiguous. Uh, this is a search for um, a colleague of mine who um, also worked on the project. Um, there's a huge list of his keys. Some of them actually are his, some of them were, some of them he never even had the private key for, but you don't necessarily actually know which, are, which he still actually uses, particularly if something isn't expired, because anyone can upload any key to these servers. Um, so if you want this disambiguation, well, where else won't you share it? Well, from the GPG handbook, it suggests posting it on your personal homepage. Um, and sure, this is, actually, this is a great option, if you have one, which is sort of less common now. And certainly Facebook is now one of the places where you may go to look for someone's contact details. So it makes, sort of makes sense in that contacts tab on your Facebook. And also, maybe you'll just want privacy in sharing it with people. Posting it on the key servers is very public. But we've added the, pri the same privacy controls that we add to any other field. So if you want to just share it with a, a select few people, um, maybe, maybe it contains an email address that isn't publicly attributed to you, or anything else, indeed a, a name that you don't want to use publicly but you do privately, then you have this option within the Facebook interface that you may not within um, other um, sharing mechanisms. So then, if you are sharing a key on your profile, well, why do you then want to receive emails encrypted from us? Well, if you're really concerned about things always being secure in, in flight, then perhaps you're concerned about the start TLS downgrade attacks that have been see that, seen out in the wild and reported on by the F EFF. Or perhaps you're very concerned about the data once it's got to your provider, um, either from the integrity of your provider or anyone else, or indeed the security of your provider, or anyone who just has access to your account, even if the provider hasn't been owned. And this is, of course, where Pear's point comes up, that password emails, reset emails, really should be sent securely, as securely as they can, because this is the key to your entire account. Um, so this was his request, roughly remembered from last year in Trondheim. And finally, when we send the emails, we also uh, sign them with Facebook's own key. And so it gives you slightly stronger assurance of the email actually is coming from Facebook. So that's why you might, might use it. But what benefit does it bring to Facebook? because people were very confused about this point when we launched. But really, it's the obvious that it makes people safer. We've kind of got a trend. We're trying to um, secure better the communications between you and Facebook. We started this uh, a few years ago using TLS for the whole site. Uh, we use start TLS um, for emails where, wherever we can. Uh, we then added the Onion site. PGP encrypting emails was just sort of the next step because this was another 
band through which we communicate with people and had no more secure way of doing it. Um, alongside this, of course, you get the stronger authentication in your communications, and thus um, it just makes Facebook a safer place for people to communicate in confidence if they so wish to. And the next step is really just to set a precedent. Uh, we're a group, of, uh, a group of engineers who built this, um, so we just wanted to see this on the rest of the web. Um, and we thought, well, the best way to try and make this happen is to add it to Facebook and see if that encourages anyone else to. Uh, we were delighted that this point was picked up in the media and then that people started tweeting to complain that Facebook was the only provider providing this and um, asking perhaps their banks to do the same for the statements thing and that they email to them. So there's the motivation, there's what we did. How did we do it? Well, it was actually not too tricky. Um, we started uh, just looking at the profile field aspect of it. So we wrote a parser in Hack just to take the keys, um, pull out the fingerprints um, and some basic data about them, verify that they actually are keys, um, etc. Then we created a back-end service which actually does sort of the hardcore lifting of this, so strongly verifies that they actually are a key by using them in GPG, uh, and then actually takes some data to encrypt. We just kind of do all the plumbing, hook this all together with the various points in the Facebook stack, so the profile field mutations, the email stack just before it gets sent, and that's basically job done. So that looks something like this. You send us a key, we accept it, we then send it to the parser, we check that it's a valid ASCII armor, we check that it claims to be a public key, we particularly don't want private keys to be sent to us for obvious reasons, uh, and then we go and look in the contents, and again, check that the contents look valid, that the contents aren't actually a private key with the headers changed to say public for whatever reason. And then we sort of take out a few bits that we don't need. Um, for example, user attribute tags, these can be pretty huge images. There's no reason to be sending them across our infrastructure because we don't use them. And then we re-encode re it into ASCII armor, uh, make sure it's in sort of the normal form, so fixed, fixed line widths, etc and then send back to our main mutator, which then goes and sends it off to this backend service, uh, which imports the key into GPG in an ephemeral, in a, sorry, ephemeral keychain, uh, pulls out all of, all of the data relating to it, so um, specifically, does it have subkeys? What are the expiries of all the relevant keys? What are the capabilities? How can we use it? Then, send back a result, store it, store it with its privacy data, of course. Um, I should note that the key that we store here is not the normalized one, it's the one that we were originally given. And then we just return a success, and you've got a key on your profile. Uh, to encrypt an email notification, it's very similar. The notifications get triggered somewhere in Facebook's stack, we don't really care where. Uh, an email is built. We take a look, does the recipient have a key? If so, we do exactly the same normalization step so that we're always sending a consistent thing to our backend service. Uh, we then send the key and the data to sign, in this case, sorry, the data to encrypt and sign, specifically the entire mind body of the email, get it back, and just fire it off. And Again, that's pretty much done. It's really not that difficult, and I would encourage anyone to try it if they can. That's sort of all I've got, and that was faster than in my other run. So we've got bags of time for questions, if you wish. <laughs> well, obviously, the slides are going to be available online afterwards, somewhere. And we have also made a recording. And recordings, all recordings, I, my goal is to have them out on YouTube sometime during next week, all of them. Yay. So, questions for John?
Frank. I have a question for your last slide. Mm -hmm. If I understand it correctly, when uh, Facebook wants to send a mail to the person, mm -hmm. then it first rechecks the mail that's been registered and reparses it and so on. Once you had normalized it earlier, why do you have to reparse it? Why can't you use the one that you saved in normalized form? Um, basically, because we don't save that one. We only save the new form of the key. Um, no particular architectural reason. There was, um, it was just easy to do it this way. Would you not want to have in the profile on Facebook the key that you already cleaned out of all the gunk and you know was in, in a normal form? Um, so, at least for, for this version, we decided that the keys that we display should be what the user has provided to us. If they choose to prov provide us something which, which GPG will accept, but is completely crazy for whatever reason, uh, we decided at this point that it wasn't really our business to tell them that they can't do that and start mutating it. Um, potentially future versions will start We'll, we'll change that model, but we haven't seen a need to yet. So, so in the previous slide where you sent the fully cleaned up version to some rectangle over there, what did the rectangle do? Throw it away? Um, oh, so we're, we're sending it... In the previous it, slide, you, you did all the cleaning up and then you sent it somewhere off to the bottom. Um, okay, yes. So we, we send it off to the PGP service. Yeah. And that it doesn't mean the key servers, it means your own PGP server. Yes. Yeah. Um, what does uh, it do with that key then? It imports it into GPG, um, li does a list keys, fingerprint, fingerprint option, and then it, um, it just looks at the data. So this is a verification that GPG actually can import the keys, and it's getting data that is then useful to us so that later on we can determine, should we display the encrypt email checkbox, for example. So, so the answer to my question is, it throws it away after doing whatever it does with it. Yes, it doesn't actually, in fact, yes. I, I, it's, it, you know, I, I was really happy when, when this happened, and I also got invited by John and Alec Muffet and a few others at, at Facebook. So there was me, there was Runa Sandvik, and a few two, three others, exhaust. Um, I think 10 uh, or so, yeah. Yeah, 10 or so, that we invited to be part of the beta testing of this. And we also, you know, try to, you know, come up with absolutely any crazy ideas on how to attack the implementation before it had been implemented in order to, you know, make it a good implementation. And I think it was a Monday when you launched it. Uh, it was, yes. Yeah, and yeah. we were online with them on, on obviously, Facebook Messenger. Uh, talking to them, and with my previous employer, I was in charge every month for an unnamed operating system to deploy security patch system coming out every month. And I, there were approximately 15,000 servers and between 100 and 120,000 clients to patch. And I remember doing that for more than five and a half years, pretty much as a project manager. It was a massive job. I know the cost of that stuff. And on that Monday morning, online Facebook Messenger, they are like, okay, ready? So in 10, 9, 8, 8 6, 7, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, launch. Okay, we are deploying it now. Tick, 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 tick. Uh, I, I don't know, three minutes afterwards? Okay, now 1.4 billion people have access to it. They was like, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, at that point, I mean, it was... We need to patch Windows, sir. Uh, oh, shit. Say that. Uh, we should be able to patch operating systems at the same speed as Facebook does deployment of, of stuff at Facebook. Yeah. Because that was like I mean, I, I should probably am, impressive. I should probably amend this that we actually only did 300 million at a time. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> frankly. Oh, come on. That's 300 million, it's so brutal. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, the question is were you, were you on the first or the last group? I mean, more questions for John, please. Yeah. Um, and now I'm speaking as somebody who really pushed PGP back in the 90s. Um, how many dozens of people have actually... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any public numbers to share, <laughs> but um, many. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah. The more the better. I, but again, back to the basic point of this. My reason for going to, and there were other well, people, lots of other people were requesting this as well. My main point was the password reset process. Because, well, a lot of us that have been doing password research and password tracking for the past 17 years or so, we know that the password reset procedure is one of the weak spots for most service providers. So if you attack the password reset function for any user, there's a good chance you can get access. And by this, Facebook had completely eliminated, in my opinion, uh, any chance of succeeding with a password reset because, you know, there's just a PGP email coming in and you need a secret key as well to be able to decrypt before you can click the link to set a new password. That really raises the bar. And I, for one, would like, really like to see a lot more companies do the same thing. Now, PGP sucks, in my opinion. But still, it's better than plain text. Question there, and yeah. then afterwards. So, if someone does lose their private key, what do you do to their account? Um, we, we don't <laughs> do anything to their account, per se. Um, but that includes we don't remove the key from their account. So if, if they w wish to enable, if, if they click the checkbox to encrypt email no notifications and there's no other way of recovering their password available, we'll show them a big, big warning message saying, are you sure you want to do this? If you lose this and you lose your password, you'll be locked out of your account. Um, but that's about all we do. We, we warn them, but we don't want to stop them because it's much better to fail closed for some people than to fail open on something like this. Um, so, I don't know of any current plans, um, I guess, um, I mean, that's sort of what I'm trying to do today here, as, um, indeed, <laughs> but um, it, it is an issue that needs, of course, socializing around for lots of people to pick, to pick it up. Um, and it needs socializing around by people who do understand it. So I think th this audience are the, are the right sort of audience to educate others. Because if, if, if someone does sort of, they, they, they take a look at how to do it and they manage to set it up, but then they forget how to do it and they don't know anyone who's able to help them, then they, they risk locking themselves out of their account for no reason. Sorry? What's the, the current rate of adoption for this, can you say? Um, I'm sticking with my answer of many dozens. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, yeah, no, no public figures, but um, it's, uh, it is a positive integer. <laughs> John, John obviously needs some beers tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Uh, so I know that the passwords you ingest password lists and so on, do you um, not that I'm aware of. Um, uh, again, this is a sort of issue. If, if someone is sharing their public key on Facebook and then we, we, we sort of don't want to know their private key. It, it's, um, whereas with passwords, when we scrape them, obviously we're not storing their password. We, we store a hashed representation. And you can see Alex talk from last year to see how, that's, how we do that. But, um, but it is at some point submitted to Facebook, whereas with their private key, this is something that we definitely should never see. If you go online to passwordscon.org, you will find links to all, well, pretty much all the previous conferences and the video recordings from there. Uh, Alec Muffet from Facebook did two talks last year in Trondheim in Norway, one about him creating crack back in the very early 90s, and one talk about how Facebook stores your password. And that should be relevant to pretty much the entire audience, I guess. 
So, one. I'm just curious, are you doing anything particularly clever uh, in the case of a revoke key, or are you just relying on the user to log in and delete it? Um, if a key is. So, we, we don't actually update keys from the key servers at the moment. So the only instance we should see a revoked key is if they actually upload it to Facebook themselves. Um, in that instance, we'd sort of we'd, we'd take this data that we've got back from the PGP service and say, OK, this key is not usable for encryption. We'll let you display it on your profile, but we won't show you the checkbox. Um, the more interesting case is actually when a key expires. So it has been in encrypted to before, but is now not, we're not able to do that. And in that instance, we do just fail closed and hope that they will log in and swap their part and swap their key at some point. I was more curious about the case if they revoke it after they've used it. So they've been using it and they, for whatever reason it's been compromised, they revoke it. So in that instance, because we're not synchronizing with the key servers at all at this point, um, we wouldn't know. If, um, if I've enabled trusted contacts and then I enable PGP, mm -hmm. um, does it still allow those trusted contacts to hand out security code to access yes. the account or is it disabled with PGP is enabled? That is still enabled is still with PGP. PGP. So um, enabling this does not change any of your other security settings. Um, but if you, do, if you do have trusted contacts enabled, then we won't show you this big, scary account lockout warning um, when you enable them. But if you don't and there's no other method, then we will. OK, well, once again, thank you, John. Mm, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>